part is to add text. So if I look up and down my tools on the side, you're going to go to the one called the letter T, and we want horizontal type tool. Now the controls are all across the top, just like it was for the brushes. So this tells me my font choice. This tells me the style of my font. Up here I have the size, the number that says 48 PT. Sharp has to do with the outer edges. These are the where the text gets placed. This is my color. And this is how to shape the test. We only need to deal with <clears throat> the size and choosing a font. That's all we're going to start with. And you know what? We do want this centered, so please click the centered thing. All right, so I'm going to go down the list. And just like it is with any word processing, here's my font. Here are the words. Doop, doop, doop. Look for something that's fairly simple and is kind of like a block letter, something that's going to give you a really thick letter so that you can put an effect on these letters and have it show up. So I'm going to go with sample on the, uh, the impact. And I'm actually going to make my font go up to at least 120. We want it to be fairly large. So you can see on mine that's a little too big. Let me go down to 100. Not bad, not bad. And then we can use transform tool to shrink it later. But you'll see. And it gives you this, you know, Latin sort of gibberish word, uh, just so you can see what the shapes look like. Let me reactivate this layer by clicking back on it. There we go. So I want you to choose a simple word that's um, an onomatopoeia word, a sound effect. So something like bang or pop or smash. Keep it a very, very short word. So I'm going to go with POP, P-O-P, -P, and I'm going to do it in all caps. Because what I want to do is I want to create an effect that makes this word look like it's going to come out at me. Now, Photoshop just automatically picked that orange color, but I really like that orange color because the color is the complementary color of the background. Um, I can experiment with other colors see what it would look like if I change it to that. If I go OK. Oh, it didn't flip. I thought it was going to flip over for me automatically. There we go. Um, that is really, really bright. I like that. So I'm going to stay. So you can experiment with colors, but I would look at and play with uh, complementary colors. OK, guys? So that is my color choice. So I've picked my font. I've picked my size, I've placed it, and I've given it color. The last step we're going to do with the letters up here is go to this text warp tool. So it's the letter T with an arc underneath it. And you'll see when you click, first off, let me just, I'm going to move the box somewhere different. Click and hold, and there's all these different shape choices. So the word pop to me is like a popping sound. It's something that's coming out at me. So as I am looking at my different shape choices, I'm going to look for a shape that looks like it's really coming out at me. And like this inflate choice where it's like it's making it round like it's a ball, I really like that. You can adjust all these sliders so it bends more. Or if I go in the other direction, it's like it's concave. It's going back. I want it to be convex coming out at me. So I definitely want to do that. Horizontal distortion. It's going to slide it to the side. So you can play with that. Do I want it to look like it's warping out to the left or to my right? And vertical is the same thing, but up and down. Do I want it to look like it's sliding back? Or leaning forward. I kind of like this one up here. It's, it reminds me of a balloon being inflated up in the air. So all right, so you're going to choose a warp text style that fits the feeling of your word. You're going to play with bend, horizontal, and vertical distortion and see what you get. So boom, there we go. All right, that's part two.